thankfulness. No, thankfulness. If we can only live in gratitude, like uh, instead of grumbling and complaining about the deficiencies and the shortcomings, if we can say, thank you, God, for the day, thank you, God, for the life, thank you, God, for the blessings, and always see the proverbial glass being half full rather than half empty. And uh, seeing the world, although it is chaotic, but it's still wonderful, and there's still a lot of goodness. Maybe we can be less agitated, maybe we can be less dissatisfied if we have this thankful heart. Under the law, the contract is usually reciprocal, meaning that if you deliver something, you get something in return by way of compensation. It's a give and take thing. And a married life is also a give and take thing. But beyond giving and taking, there will be times that you will be called upon to go beyond that. Like, you will have to diminish the use of the pronouns, I, me, and mine. There would be times that you will be called upon to change the paradigm from saying, how about my feelings, and shift it to, it's not about me anymore. It's about you, it's about my family. And in some extreme cases, you might even be called upon to say, I forgive you even if it hurts so much. And um, usually the, the hurt, the pain that comes to us, actually come from the heart, not from the outside. Because we always put ourselves at the center of experience. That's how we do it, that's instinct. But the brain, you know, because the brain is a survival machine, and it scans the environment for threats to physical safety. But more importantly, it, it looks for threats to your um, self-esteem. Why is self-esteem so important to us? Our self-esteem is the way that we view how others regard and respect us. So, it is a, it is a matter of security for us. We want self-esteem because we do not want, because you don't want your boss to scream at you in front of many people because you will lose your self-esteem and the respect of people and maybe you will be pushed down the, the food chain, lower the food chain or lower the pecking order. You feel that the people have little regard for you then you will not be secure. But God endowed us with this mechanism to protect against the uh, dangers. But it is an instantaneous system, you know, because it's intended to protect you from harm. So if there is a, a runaway truck hurtling towards you, you do not analyze what's going to be your brain will push you out of harm's way immediately. That's what we will do. And the same thing happens when you encounter a, a, a simple raise of the tone of the voice of the, your spouse, a simple smirk on the face can trigger this defensive mechanism. But you know, it sacrifices accuracy for speed. And why does it sacrifice accuracy for speed? Because you have to be safe that sorry. Because if that runaway drop, you cannot analyze it anymore. So the reaction of this system is very immediate. Sometimes it can be disproportionate. Sometimes it can be too much. And it's not accurate. You pala pagtingin mo. It's not the runaway drop after all. Maybe it's the shadow of a low flying small aircraft that has the engine, the engine is very uh, noisy. So you, you hear a raised voice a little and you're triggered. 
it's the first step towards understanding what is happening to all people. So you feel a threat to your self-esteem and then you one word leads to another and then there's a full misunderstanding. But the reality is if you are threatened and then you will be up angrily. What will happen is that in the end you will suffer more. You, you, I think you will know that. But, but we continue to suffer. No, we continue to suffer. Number one, because we are attached to the world. That's the number one reason. And um, we do not want to part with the things of this world. All of us. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. And why does the Bible say so? Because the world was not created in order to satisfy or fulfill us. Because we are not created for this place. We are created for another home. And our life in this earth is a journey. And so, does it mean that you have to disengage from the world? No. You should continue to work hard. Jay is a hard worker. Jay is a hard worker. You should continue to work hard and um, um, have visions for success and enjoy the blessings and bless others. But do not get attached because if you get attached, even if you're very successful, because everything is permanent in this world and even if that thing is quite stable and will not pass away quickly, you will grow old and you are the one who will pass away and you will have to part from, from that thing. You know? But if you are not attached, when you are old and you are facing death, you will not be bothered. You know? You're ready to face the Creator, you are not attached. So, is, is it good for us Christians? Yes, it is good because the Bible tells us not to be conformed to the patterns of this world. And therefore, not being attached is also a reflection of our transformation as true Christians. And for practical purposes, it's also good because you can enjoy moderately your life, but you are not worried that someday you're going to lose it or you're going to pass away. So it's, it's good. And then when, for example, you, ha you, have, you have been endowed with beauty, you're good looking, you have to thank God it's a blessing. Enjoy it while it lasts. Because for sure, the, the good looks will fade away. And if you are not attached to it, when it fades away, you will not be bothered. No. Kaya ako hindi ako bothered eh. Kaya ako bothered. And another reason why we we are suffering is that we are also attached to to ourself. No. When we say self, we are talking of the poison of uh, self-entitlement. When we are threatened, the self looms so large as if it is the only important thing in the universe. And what does the Bible say? You know, the Bible says that um, we should be empty of the self and to live by the Spirit. And uh, what does it mean? It means that we should uh, deny the self in total surrender. So our prayer is uh, for us to die to the self and to live by the Spirit. And why is it important? Because, you know, the, the, the self is the uh, receptacle of all the pain that we experience in this world. So if you are overemphasizing on that self, you are always suffering. And so when the Bible says, let us die to the self and live in the spirit, it 
means that we should empty our hearts of the self and fill it with God's Spirit. The married life is fraught with the joy and also pain. And there will come a time that maybe there's a small argument between you and then one word leads to another and there's an escalation that leads to a major misunderstanding. And you know what you will notice? If you look, um, look back at what happened between you, you will realize that the root of the misunder serious misunderstanding is actually a very small thing. And it went out of control because of our fear, uh, our anger. And why do we get threatened and we feel angry? Because when we are angry, we feel right. When, when you are angry, you feel right and you feel that you're in control. So you feel secure. But in reality, in the end, you feel angry, you suffer more. And, you know, one of the ironies in this life is wisdom comes in, in trickles. They come in small pockets. You know? And so, if you, have, you think you have gained enough wisdom to live by, the, the reality is maybe you're too old to live by them. But you know, even as a young couple, a young couple like you, you can gain wisdom if you will open your heart and um, release that uh, sense of self. Uh, that's a way of also dealing with the um, vicissitudes of, of daily life. No, so, pasensya na kayo, napapahaba. Siya na lang, I will just tell you an allegory. Malapit na. Uh, imagine that you are, you know, living, flowing, fresh water, cascading down the mountains, and you are not resisting the soil, you're adjusting to the terrain, you are nourishing the soil to allow the plants to live and thrive and grow. You are nourishing water. And all of a sudden, you become frozen ice. You become ice, because lahat naman ng ice frozen, you know. So, you become ice. You could not flow. You resist the soil. You're stuck. And you are not nourishing the soil, you know. So, this is the time when you are overcome by that um, poison of self-entitlement. That you are overreacting and that you, the sense looms so high and, um, you know, you cannot move anymore. But the simple truth that, you know, could be hidden from you is the fact that the, the flowing water, the nourishing water was simply melted ice. You know, that's an allegory. The, the flowing water is just melted ice. And, you know, God's message is simple. You can melt that frozen self in your heart and turn it into flowing, free, living, and nourishing water that nourishes the spirit. We die to the self and live by the spirit. We get rid of that uh, self and um, fill it with the spirit. You know, 80% of our thoughts, because when we are not focused on a specific task, the uh, default mode of the mind is mind wandering. 80% of our thoughts are actually self-referential. You worry about everything, you replay it in your mind, that's wondering. It's all about what I said, what he said, what he did, what I said, what is the impact. And all of these self-referential thoughts cause more suffering to you. And if you are engrossed in this um, uh, self-referential thoughts, it's like you are 
building a skyscraper on top of yourself. And you are also bothered by the past, reviewing everything and speculating on the future. And you know, the past is gone and the future is not yet. But if you insist on, uh, I mean, being engrossed in them, it's like you're carrying two mountains on your shoulders, actually. So, the prayer, our prayer for the church and JM is for the newlywed couple to, to live by the spirit rather than, rather than the self. Lord, we pray that uh, you allow them to trust in you, Lord, and make their heart vessels empty of the self and full of the spirit, full of your spirit, a spirit that has enough room for forgiveness and understanding and kindness. The vessel that allows for the rising of the ups and downs in life as merely parts of the natural rhythms and the changing patterns of your physical existence. Of course, as Christians, we are mindful of impermanence, but we are mindful of God's promise of eternal glory with him. So finally, I pray that God will bless you. God, please bless their union. Um, make them have more time for each other always. And teach them true and lasting love for each other. I love that. that they can only learn from you. A round of applause so much for that, Mr. Arcelia. Such a great wisdom. Thank you for sharing that not only to JM and Mela, but to us as well. We will now ask you to please hand over your daughter, Sir Mr. Arcelia.